today we will have the last discussion about uh, the suffering the three types of suffering that we have been discussing we have also discussed about how we contribute to our suffering there are three types of suffering one is caused by as do god himself is involved in it life provides opportunity for learning through these sufferings you realize your helplessness when you actually encounter such a suffering haven't you experienced like that where you seem to be disregarded as an entity i remember one day when i was in the ashram um you know when you stay in the ashram the early morning after your <clears throat> breakfast is over you are supposed to do what is called as a building cleaning seva everyone is expected to maintain uh, the uh, pristine glory of the presence of guru by maintaining the ashram in a impeccably clean manner so we are given the opportunity from say 6:30 am to 7 am half an hour to clean the premises where we stay the place of accommodation where we stay outside it because there is a garden because there are trees birds coming you may have something there in front of the corridor your the the restroom the toilets and the bathrooms that are utilized all of them have to be cleaned so one day i was staying there like that and uh, my job was to clean the corridor where i was staying and uh, i had a broomstick in my hand you know the hard broom made of the coconut uh, uh, ribs so i had the hard broom and i was sweeping and when i was sweeping the big black ant we call it as katta undu in tamil all of you might have seen it so the big big black ant one big black ant is there it is trying to scour and find some food for itself or whatever so i am uh, beginning to sweep i didn't notice it before it uh, caught hold of the broomstick so as i was sweeping i was one or two strokes i had swept the ant also and uh, it started to bite the rib one of the ribs of the broom hard broom kadikir with a lot of anger it is biting at the rib and at that moment i felt as if my hand was the hand of god and the broom was the uh, power that nature has been given by the lord and the ant was actually me you know in our life sometimes life just sweeps us away and we have lot of ego and we challenge life by biting at the rib which is all powerful the rib can actually beat and kill the ant you know thodapathala and the rib already adicha sethu pedu so nature is like the the broom stick in the hand of the lord and it was a lovely meditation for me many days i do this meditation and broom stick bhagwan meditation i sit and close my eyes and think of myself as that ant which is challenging life which is saying i will not leave you <laughs>
So some sufferings in our life are like how that ant felt, you know, there is a bigger order. That order decides that this place will be cleaned. You can't, the ant does not have a choice. It is part of an environment in which it is surviving. And it doesn't have any capacity to decide how things will happen. The predicament of the ant was not much different from how I feel now in this world. Nothing can be decided. When it will uh, it will be dawn is not in my hand. When it will be dusk is not in my hand. I like my dawn to be uh, coming little later. Like how it happened today for me. And lot of lovers, you know, they always say that they don't want the night to end. But it will end, you know. <laughs> it's not in their hand. Wishful thinking is of no value. Because it's like the story of this ant which is helpless in front of the broom of time. Kala just sweeps everything away, doesn't it? So you can also go outside, use a hard broom, find an ant, sweep it and learn to do uh, ant broom and Bhagavan meditation. And in our life we experience some sufferings which are created by a higher order. We do not have the intelligence and the capacity. After all we are looking for small, small crumbles of biscuit, that's all. There is nothing more in our life. But there is a great order that is functioning. And that order decides that these things will happen in this way. Like today you are in the lockdown. Even if it is open, you don't come for the physical class. That's a different story. But today we are in lockdown. We don't have a choice. I made fun of my daughter today. You tell me wherever you want, I will take you for lunch today. Oh, unfortunately, government is not letting me. <laughs> so many things are not under our control. And those are called as Deivam. In that sense, Mapla is one Deivam, Matapun is one Deivam. My Guru Swami Paramatananda, he used to say, Jamata Dashamu Graha. <laughs> Jamata na Mapla, son in law. The problem with all these uh, grahas is that they will stand where they are, they will look at you and influence your life. Whereas you can't do anything to them. Jamata is also like that. Wherever he stands or wherever she stands, they will affect life, don't they? So he used to say, Jamata Dashamograha. We cannot control 99% or 99.99% of things we cannot control. And our ego is about that 0.01%. We have a very big, fat, thick, um, ultra cholesterol ego, you know. About what is that about? That ant biting the rib of that broom and saying, but I will not leave you. <laughs> so suffering of this type is not under your control. You helplessly go through that suffering. And later on, we will explain to you the purpose of that. You know, suffering is there in this universe, you know. And God has not... Uh, created anything that is useless. Brahman has allowed this creation to happen in this particular way with its pleasures and with its pains. It has a purpose. Later on we will discuss about that. About why helplessly suffering is there as part of this creation. Isn't it a flaw on the part of the creator to have Suffering built into the system. We will discuss about this. 
if you if you have this question in your mind and if you wanted to ask i have asked it on your behalf but today we are going to talk about something else today we are talking about the the other type of suffering also i will mention then we will talk about what we want to discuss today the other type of suffering is uh, caused by incidental uh, you know function of nature for example uh, the heat the chillness the snowfall the heat wave the forest fires the volcanoes the eruptions a meteor coming and hitting on a, on the planet so many things like that are there as part of nature i mean uh, many people in our group have said that they have got cough cold they are having fever we don't invite it we don't want to have a fever we don't want to have a cough or a cold actually we don't want to have it but it's inevitable so there are natural causes which also bring suffering as an experience in life again this also comes under the category of that 99.99% you can't do anything about it you go through the suffering and then you try to deal with it but we have been discussing about our expectation which is also a cause of suffering haven't we been discussing about it expecting the impossible we expect that our spouse our lover will give us happiness we expect that our son or our daughter will give us happiness we expect that our son will give us the security or daughter will give us the pleasure he is giving pleasure now and then now he is giving pain <laughs> and now pleasure and then pain see the example how he is sitting on the lap and standing on the lap both examples he is giving us bhagavan is coming in the form of this child we expect that we will get pleasure and security from three sources in our life we have been discussing about this we think people will give us security or pleasure we think situations will give us security or pleasure we think uh, objects will give us security or pleasure and whatever gives us pleasure we don't like it right huh? whatever gives us pleasure we don't like it correct we don't like it we depend on it is not just liking anymore we depend on people and if there is a small behavior change also how do we feel we feel abandoned we feel depressed adjectives i don't have to give you so it is about that the expectation of the impossible from these three security and pleasure from people situation and things and that's what we've been discussing and this comes under the category upon which you have control there are two ways in which you can develop this control one is by understanding two is by strengthening yourself what do i mean by saying when uh, you develop understanding 
and I say you have to understand. What is it that I am asking you to understand? Audio, take that. That we, if we don't want to understand, also we will be made to understand. That portion is over. I am talking about that where we have some control, that 0.01% in that area. No, I am not talking about any of that. I want you to basically understand. Yes, sir, Tomek, you want to say something? Before seeking for it inside ourselves, we have to understand that it is not available where we are searching. Have you understood that? I am not talking about how a physics teacher will ask you, have you understood this principle? Not like that. <laughs> that is just intellectual understanding. What we are talking about is, when I refer to understanding, I am saying, you have to take each person. You know, there are some pe people whom you hate. Your list, do you have your list? We made one list, you remember? Lista. In a list. You can photo it and put it on list. Correct, no? Ah, you have a list. Very good. We have asked you to make a list of people whom you like and dislike. Situations you like and dislike objects you like and dislike for example i don't like the broom some people will say well am i so once you made a list you have to pick each one of them like how i was talking today about the ant broom and bhagavan meditation like that, you have to pick each and every person who is on your list of likes. And you have to ask yourself, what is the basis of the relationship I have with this person? What is it that I expect out of this person? If you expect that whenever this person comes, I feel that I am happy. It's a pleasure to be in your company. You know, in when, when we say uh, welcome address, what do we say? When we give a, a valedictory address, what do we say? It is a pleasure for me to invite all of you. We say like that, no? Will you say to those people who are on the list that you dislike? As long as you have this list of people whom you like and this list of people whom you dislike, you are broadcasting to life about your weak points of how you can be manipulated to suffer. The moment you say, let's say I tell, I like Satish very much. I want to talk to him at least five times. I will call him and I will say, Satish, have you care? Satish will say, Jai Gopal, have you care? Okay, let's have a good day. Madhyana Kaisa. What did I get out of this? <laughs> I just want to hear the voice. Again, afternoon I call. Again, I ask him. So, how was the day? All well? He says, all well. 
Okay, we'll speak in the early evening. Again, we call in the early evening. Again, inquire. Feel very happy that we are talking to each other. We do it for two years, three years, four years. We have become thick friends now. Thick friends means what? Number of times you call and exchange pleasantries is uh, in intact, full. Then one day I make a call to Satish. He is not picking up. So I wait, he will call me. 20 minutes have gone. How will the 20 minutes feel for me? What happened to him? Did something go wrong with him? Why he is not picking up? Is his wife okay? Is his son okay? Is his house okay? Is it possible that he met an accident? Did he break his leg? Nothing would have happened to him. He would have killed him even. <laughs> In our imagination. The moment we desire that this person provides pleasure to me, I like this person. You put somebody on that list. You are announcing to life that here is my Kuruni. I give it to you. You know the hat that is locked on the back. You see, Tomek, I am telling you, you see the people who have the hair locked on the back and make into a ball like thing, that's called as Kurmi. So if you go and give it voluntarily to someone and say you can pull in whatever direction you want, what will they do? They'll play with you. Like that you are going and telling, I like Tomek very much. And if something happens to Tomek, I cannot tolerate. Nothing should happen to Tomek. He should not age. He should not get sick. He should not get throat trouble. He should keep on talking to me whenever I want. We develop a castle of expectations from people whom we want to experience pleasure and that is an announcement we are making because we are like a land environment each one of us we are like a land environment we can call it as a UAN environment van environment it is a universal network whatever you are thinking is parallelly stored in some place for which somebody has access. Somebody can see what is there inside your mind. And uh, we have to understand this, that when we expect pleasure from someone or something or some situation, what is wrong in that? Basic understanding itself is wrong because I think out of experience all of you would have realized that no person or no situation or no object has the capacity to give you only pleasure. You agree with me? So can you meditate on each person? That is what you are supposed to do. Let us say somebody is uh, like Rama. Dharma Vigrahavan Rama. He is the embodiment of righteousness, auspiciousness. You cannot find a flaw in his life. In spite of having all kinds of trouble. One example is that he tells to Ravana, Indru Poi Naleva. You have become a Nirayudhapani. I don't want to fight with you when you have become weak. Please go to me. Rest well. Who is he telling this to? The abductor of his wife. Will you be able to say such things? He was the epitome of righteousness.
So, when we take each person and when we look at our experience with that person, we will find that we have always had a mixture of pleasure and pain. Do you agree with me on this? Are we all on the same page? Or do you have any one relationship in which you never had pain? So, are you having a proper expectation? Somebody said, no sir, now they are keeping quiet. Are you having a proper expectation that you will get pleasure out of X, Y, Z, A, B, C? Are you, is it a, is it a possible expectation? That is why I told you, you are having an impossible expectation. And this is what I want you to understand. If you understand this, then what will happen? You will not have such an expectation. So if somebody's behavior is not appropriate to your expectation or is not appropriate, let's say you don't have an expectation, normally they are like this, today they are like this, you didn't have any specific expectation from that person, what will happen to your mind when they behave in a different way? Nothing will happen. You will not be dejected. You will not be angry. You will not be upset. You will not be like that ant which is trying to bite the broom. Because your anger is of no use. It will only hit you. Only hurt you, it only kill you, that's all. And uh, when you have understanding, you will have acceptance. You will be able to see exactly how people are. And their behavior will not have the power to disturb you then you will be actually empowered. We talk about empowerment, empowerment, then we are, we are thinking that you have to get a job, you have to get more salary, you have to get car, you have to get bus, you have to get aeroplane, you have to have a helicopter. We think empowerment means adding things to ourselves. Understanding, realizing the truth, acceptance is the empowerment that we all need. That is like applying oil and putting the hand into the jackfruit. So this exercise I want you to do. Pick up each person you like. Think of them again and again. And tell to yourself this person can behave in any which way. They can cause pleasure also to me. They can cause pain also to me. I do not have impossible expectations with respect to my wife, with respect to my husband, with respect to my son, with respect to my daughter, with respect to my driver, with respect to my home made help, with respect to my colleague, with respect to my neighbor, with respect to my enemy. One day if your enemy smiles at you, what will happen to you? You will have an ischemic heart attack. <laughs> so, please think about this. After doing nice asanas and pranayamas, after doing a nice relaxation, sit, become still, become calm, relaxed, Pick up one relationship, 
dissect it thread bare analyze the expectations you have and install shock absorber for each relationship shock absorber installation meditation do this for this whole week and i will put a poll today for uh, saturday morning class so that i don't feel like i am sitting and lamenting myself in a yaravudu angena na paatha pakkathu veetla na paatha irukku avanukku ipo ellarkum puriyum nadha ayyo paavam oru dabba mala ukkan thaana kaalaila aaramani lendu pesine irukku naalu that is the situation for all of us that's a different story at least i don't want to feel it like i would like to i am not expecting the impossible i hope <laughs> so i will send a poll respond to it and uh, the result of the poll will be that we will have a class on saturday <laughs> and those who want to come <laughs> I'm just joking. So we will take a call and decide if it is viable, if it is possible, if it will be helpful to everyone. We will try to keep it on Saturday morning instead of Sunday morning so that you can be in person. And uh, during this week, please do this meditation. 